eight minutes. Now, go ahead. Yeah. So you can remove this section of the hub, the blades stay in place, and you can you can change out shims and then put it all back together. You don't have to put a uh, uh, protractor on or anything like that. It's very, very, very user friendly. Um, there's a, I know, I believe four different people that have run this prop up here in the last month, and they're all very happy with. What kind of feedback have you heard from them on it? Um, I've heard that it pulls. Yeah, the previous models, it pulls better, it's getting better fuel uh, consumption. might be triggered by. Do you, do you know the uh, I, physics behind that? Yeah, I believe it has to do with the curvature. Right, right. But what I would, what I would assume Your best is guess. It, it has to do with the vortices that happen at the top of the prop. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, I don't know. Something <laughs> like that. That makes sense to it me. It has something it's to do with It's basically a wing, right? Yeah. Right? Okay. Very cool. Um, what else? Can we, let's check out the engine. by Earl Reese. What model engine is it again? It is a 0360. An 0360. It's an internal 0360. Um, has 9 to 1 in it, thermal cam. Um, it's making 194.4 horse. Wow. And that was dynoed at Earl Reese. Nice. Um, the things I don't think we've talked about is we have an actual generator. So you don't you don't instead need, of an alternator. Yeah, instead of an alternator. You yeah. don't need any excitement to get it to start running. Yeah. Um, you can kill your battery, prop start it, and then you you have an electrical system. Wow. Um, and that was uh, that was donated to us from Winforce. Right. Down right. In California, Another sponsor. Yep. Yeah. So we speaking of sponsors, we want to make sure we shout them all out. Incredible Cato prop, obviously. Yeah. Aero Recip hooking us up with this hot rod engine. And then a Monkworks alternator. Anything else? Let's check your list. That's good. I got, <laughs> check, we'll go check, down my list. Check the quick. notes. Yep. Anything so, else? Firewall forward that we need to shout out. Uh, firewall forward. Arrow reset uh, helped us out with getting the engine in a very, very reasonable time. Yep. Um, they dyno it for us. We saw yep. this exhaust. The dyno this exhaust. This is exactly the horsepower that it's getting. It does. Wow. And remind 
Remind me which exhaust is this again? That's a rooted exhaust. That's a rooted exhaust. Another yep. stock then, right? Yep. And right they're, and uh, they're down in uh, North plant. Dakota. Right. Um, see, Acme. Well, we'll just go ahead and yeah, I'll, let's I'll, do it. I'll let's get those sponsors. sponsors. Yeah. Acme has donated the shocks. They've donated the gear legs, and they've donated. Yeah, the truth, a really nice shot of all the. Yeah, all the beautiful see. suspension there. If I can turn the camera a little. <laughs> And they've also donated the tail stinger for us. Yeah, we'll get a shot of that if we make our way back there. But I bet there's some more sponsorship action happening yes. in this area. Behringer, yeah. <laughs> Behringer donated the uh, the wheels and brakes. Yeah. Uh, Airframes donated the tires. Wonderful. Cub Crafters donated the gap seals on the horizontal and the uh, vertical. Right. Monk Works donated the generator. Right. So the generators are 30 amp. Uh, 30 amp. Microburst Thank you, over Waylon. Us, uh, uh, position and nav and show it here. Nice. Steve donated the gasculator that we're using. Fantastic. Mad Gypsy Designs, which y'all have to get a picture. Y'all have to get a bit uh, video of that. The knobs on the oh, yeah, let's control the stick out. and the knobs yeah. on the throttle. This is a, this is a local vendor who makes these gorgeous custom knobs. Can you get in oh, there yeah. and take a look at the sun off of that gorgeous, I really love your uh, decal on the throttle there too. That's, that's nice. You see that? Yeah. That's, that's a nice touch. <laughs> it's good to, be, good to be reminded of those things. That's so cool. And then since we're in there, I know you want to talk about those beautiful seats from Sport Aircraft Seats. Yep. Sponsored. The, yep. Sport Aircraft Seats sponsored the... Another uh, local vendor. Yep. Right across the field here. Um, he provided the seats for us. He did all the... Uh, the, the gorgeous sti stitching yeah, the and the leather gorgeous work. stitching. Yeah. And then all this leather around the door here is also part of the... You know, it's cowhide from the seats. That, from the, the seats. Or yeah. from what the seats are made out of. It looks really sharp. Carbon Concepts donated the interior panels. Um, or he donated the rear seat, the toolbox. Uh, we get flat stock from him, cut it to size. Uh, yeah. And then fit it. Can you see yeah. with the camera here? It's easy to tell in the, in the sun that, that nice carbon fiber texture. All the, the floorboards, the panels, everything is carbon fiber, which is super durable. Easy to take care of. Hose it out, right? Yep. Nice. Yep. So the floorboards are completely removed. Short of this floorboard and this floorboard, the rest of it, you can remove the entire interior of the aircraft. It takes you about 10 minutes, and you can access every pull. You can see every bit of the wow. um, It's It's very maintenance friendly. Yeah. Uh, and Stoddard's, let's see, we got three more. Stoddard's donated. All the stuff to hook the engine up, the bug nuts, the, uh, the control cables, the scat tube, all the things that are really small that you don't think cost a lot of money. Right, it really adds up. <laughs> it really add up very fast and Stoddard's donated all And that's from stuff. Stoddard Aircraft Parts in Anchorage, in Anchorage. another local, local sponsor. Um, and Micro BG. Micro oh. BG donated all of our Vortex generators. Fantastic. And I know we talked about the Vortex generators last time, but tell me, tell me again, remind everyone, what is the purpose of these little guys up here? What so are they doing for you? At a higher angle of attack, we have static gears on the top. Well, at a higher angle of attack, that static gear starts separating and then you lose wheel. But these do, do create vortices to excite that static gear going across the top of the wing and keep it connected to the wing, connected to the working surface. And they work very, very well. They work very well. I mean, I, honest, honest to God, I flew I flew that plane for about 500 hours before I put them on, and I big got brother. Yes, big brother. And that my rotation my rotation went down about 20 feet. Um, vertical speed went up 350 feet, and I haven't been able to get it to stall land on clean ground if that if your tail hits the ground before it stalls. Yeah. And you attribute a lot of that to those machines. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It was it was breaking. I don't know what it was across the ground, but what I was indicating was 24 miles an hour. It was breaking to hit the ground. The ground effect, yeah. Which that's probably more like 34 miles an hour across the ground. 
or so. Yeah. Um, when I put those on, it totally stopped breaking. I don't have any air communication. On and then you're settle when you settle in. Um, when you power up and take off, the tail comes up. You get your point of rotation. It used to rotate. You have to release pressure. Or else Remind everybody, if you ask a question in the chat on either Instagram or Facebook during the live stream, we'll select one or two of you to win a free raffle ticket, a free entry to win this airplane. And then I know that the Junior's got a Dancini Aero sponsored trivia question that we'll get to here in a little bit too. Everybody wants to know what the weight of this thing is. So, so we'll get to that in a minute, but I wanted to remind everybody, participate in the live stream for a free entry into the raffle. and then. After we reveal this airplane to the world, those tickets are going to go like that. So you need to act now. We always sell out in April, and now that people have seen the finished product, everybody's going to want it. So you need to go to alaskaairmen.org and get a raffle ticket 24 hours a day right there online, or you can call us, 907-245-1251. I will tell you, when Reagan says she promises it's the winning ticket, don't believe her. She does not have that power. <laughs> so. <laughs> Don't waste your time asking. It's, it's, a, it's the odds in your favor are the same for everyone. So, all right, back to this gorgeous airplane. Do you want to talk about the panel? I do, I yes. Let's talk about the panel. The panel. Well, yeah, we have not really discussed the panel at all. <laughs> we didn't have a panel last time we were out here visiting. So tell us what, what decisions you've made and why. There. All right, so what we have here is, so we have an attitude indicator, or a uh, primary flight display. And this is going to be a G5, or a Garmin G5, a Garmin uh, GI275 EIS. This is going to be our engine monitor. Mm -hmm. We got an Aero 660. Under the dash, we got a GDL 50R. The GDL 50R is talking to the Aero 660 that's giving you AHARS information. It's so you're also... hitting us with a lot of technical <laughs> jargon that sounds very impressive. Can, can you dumb it down for okay. us a little bit? Um, this is going to give you attitude information. Oh yeah, great. Let's let's light it up. So you can see what's going on. Here. Over here we have a trig transponder. So the trig transponder is pushing ADS-B out. Great. So people can see you. Great. The GDL50 is bringing ADS-B in and being displayed uh, on your arrow. On the Aero 660. Great. Great. And the Aero 660 is also connected to the radio, so you can feed frequencies off the Aero 660 right onto the radio. What the GDL50 also does is it gives you weather on your Aero 660. Wow. So you'll have ADS-B on here, you'll have weather on here, and you'll also have AHARS on here. Wow. And then we put the Alaska chip in, so we got the topo around here. So you can also see the um, terrain that's around us. Let's see if it'll load. It'll give it a few minutes. Yeah. But it's also going to be this terrain that's around us, so you'll be able to see the mountains out there on the... On the uh, uh, yep, you can see uh, Lazy Mountain right there. Nice. But it gives us all that information. Nice. Um, so you've got a lot of sophisticated information coming at you in a very simple and clean panel. Very user friendly. Yeah, yeah. I really like that. You, it, you've made a lot of nice choices there. And then we put a winter airspeed indicator in it. Um, if all the rest of this stuff fails, you'll have airspeed. You'll be able to you'll be able to land without stalling the aircraft, um, wow. and that the airspeed indicator is is super sensitive as well. That's the reason that we went with winter. Yeah. Um, winter see. is the manufacturer of that. Correct. Got it. Great. Yeah, I believe they're in Europe. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, camera ladies, do you want to hit us with any questions? Have we had any questions from any of our viewers yet? We have had plenty of questions. <laughs> um, Can let's you see. Access any of I saw one asking yeah. about stall speed. Yeah. The plane has not flown yet. Right. <laughs> well, to be determined. To be determined. The plane, the plane right. will fly for, so we have an airworthiness certificate for it. Um, as of today, we have insurance on it. Saturday, it will fly for the first time. Fantastic. It's it's a newborn baby, yeah. so it's it's fresh. We'll be a, Tell us a little bit about that process, the, the fly-off process, and how that works for an experimental build. All right, so 
Um, being that we have an experimental engine in the plane and we have an experimental plane, then we're going to need to put 40 hours on the aircraft. And once we get through the 40 hours, then our um, our range limitations are are taken care of, and then right. we could really fly it wherever we want. So within that first 40 hours, no passengers, and you can't go beyond a certain distance from the airport. Is that yeah. right? So and once you want, yeah, the distance from the airport. Once you pass your test flight phase, you can. I, I believe you can run passengers. Oh, in. at that point you can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You, you're just still limited. Within a I believe distance. we have a hundred miles. Okay. We're limited to a hundred miles right okay. now. Okay. Okay. So a lot of flying in circles for, in circles. for 40 hours. Yep. Great. But uh, we're going to try to knock that 40 hours off next week. Great. Great. Exciting. And then we'll, uh, we'll hopefully have some great flying footage to share. Okay. What other questions do we have from um, viewers? If you want to take a look here, we've got what size tires is one of them. Um, oh, yeah. Let's talk. Let's, that brings up a great point before, yeah. before. Let's go over here. I, I have a... Uh, a special honor to bestow on you, Junior, speaking of these tires, that every year we sell tickets, we get a lot of feedback from our buyers and our customers, and they all have interesting ideas about how the plane should be done and what next year should look like. This is the first time ever we've had buyers tell us that this plane is too Alaskan. It's too oh, rugged. Wonderful. It's too tough. So I just wanted to congratulate you on being the first. <laughs> To build such a rugged, badass airplane that some people feel that it's it's too too elastic. That is that is wonderful. <laughs> it's really a special achievement. That's, that's yes. what I was shooting for. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, and um, I understand. I understand if some of those potential buyers just feel like they can't, you know, they can't make sense of this beautiful beast. And a big part of that could be these tires. So let's talk about these these beefy tires. What are those? Uh, so these are 35 inch Alaska Bush wheels. Um, they the are, biggest available, correct? They are, they are the biggest available right now. So um, what's the purpose? Why would I run those big beefy tires? Well, one, it's going to it's going to soften your landings quite a bit. The it makes it a lot easier to roll across uh, rocks and right. and stuff off like airport. that. Yeah, off airport stuff. Larger um, rocks, larger yeah. logs. You can you can drop your uh, tire pressure down uh, quite a bit, and you don't feel as much with these being that you don't feel as much the airframe doesn't feel as right. much it, it right. soaks up just about everything that you run across right. what you're saying is that i can be an actually i should be a worse pilot when i have these and, you use and have a worse landing yes. and my airplane and i will, will be just fine yeah and that goes along with having these shocks right the shocks yeah. I, I i keep telling people it adds about a thousand hours onto your flight time <laughs> Thousand hours. I mean, it will it will clean those Who needs landings skill? up. So, Who needs you, skill? yeah, you put you put thirty five inch tires in Acme shocks. It'll clean your landings up so much. Right, right. I love it. I love it. And of course, I'm teasing about them being too Alaskan a little bit. We can't help but toot our own horns up here. But really, the giant tires are are the only feature that I I can see that may not make sense in other parts of the world. But in general, you've built a very practical airplane. Easy to fly, um, durable, longevity features built in, tons of power, but it just flies like a Super Cub. It's a Super yeah. Cub, right? There's there's nothing there that wouldn't make this a perfect fit for any buyer anywhere in the world, really. Yeah. And I, you know, ultimately what we're trying to achieve is get the plane off the ground as fast as possible, right? right. Well, those tires, along with the three inch gear, is going to allow you to hit that point of rotation faster because you have the ability to rotate to that yeah. point. Yeah. If you had smaller tires on it, you would snap, you'd slap your tail wheel on the ground every time you hit the point of rotation. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And um, you know, you do hear a lot. You don't if your home base is on pavement. If you're running on a paved runway, most of the time. These might not be the best long-term choice for you. We used to joke 50 bucks a landing on yeah. pavement, right? Um, but the folks, you give our, our good old Billy James at Behringer a call, he'll hook you up with a different wheel and tire, and you can fly this sucker anywhere on any kind of surface. Yeah. And just put these back on when you want to have a good time. So what are some more of those practical features? We talked about you can remove the panel, you can spray it out with a hose. That's your belly pod for whatever camping equipment, wherever you want to go, whatever yeah. you want to do. Well, let's, what let's what else? Do you have some got? questions about storage? Oh, storage. Yeah, let's talk storage. Yeah. Oh, this yeah, we're, is maybe one of my right favorite features of this airplane is the storage. So we have. 
You can fit, you can pretty much fit your pickup truck in this airplane. I feel like I could ride in there. Yeah. That, that looks big enough for me. Um, <laughs> and, and I say you can fit your pickup truck in the airplane. Oops. I fit my pickup truck in the airplane. <laughs> I, oh, I've oh, had oh. the whole inside of it filled up and then I uh, <laughs> filled it into the plane and I left. Yeah. Um, but storage wise, so. So this rear seat, we want to be able to load cargo, right? So we can remove this rear seat here. Wow. And just like that, we can load cargo. Wow. This whole area is uh, is usable for cargo. We have tie downs up here. All the way to the tail, almost all the way to the tail. We have tie downs here. We have tie downs down there. We can strap everything in. And there's another there's another piece that goes um, back there where you're shining that camera. Um, that's a seat back for the third seat as well. And these these hooks right here are tied into structure, so that you could actually uh, you could put a third passenger back here. The seat back for your passenger seat allows the legs of the passenger to come by here, or if you got you know, a, a child or something, they can sit yeah. back there pretty comfortably. Yeah. It's kind of a normal thing up here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then our extended baggage. This is maybe my favorite thing about this whole airplane, Junior. Look at that. How how sexy is that? Like, that <laughs> that's a fantastic detail. I really, I really do love that. That is so cool. And then easy access to that extended baggage way back to the tail. You can get to everything. Yeah. You can get to everything. You can load it up with just about everything. Yeah. Um, the heavy stuff will go underneath the or underneath in the belly pod. That keeps your CG forward. The light stuff goes in the back of it. Yeah. Um, a sleeping bag. Picnic, pay, picnic basket, whatever. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Or a cow blanket will fit right in there as well, yeah. and it just sits right on top. And that's that's where my cow blanket goes every time. It's in there right now. <laughs> nice. nice. More questions, I'm sure. What do you got? Oh, yeah. Lots of questions. Yeah, um, got quite a few. You can start on Facebook here. Um, okay, the first one I'm seeing is what was your favorite part of the build? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> your favorite part of the build? Part. I think the favorite part was uh, both things. No, no, it's got to be when the fuselage came out of paint. Yeah. That was my favorite part. Because it looks like an airplane for the oh, first time. Yeah. yeah. And the paint turned out really, really nice. It is beautiful. Another sponsor we need to mention. Stewart, Stewart Systems. Systems. Yes. Yeah, Stewart it's... Systems donated all the fabric and the paint for the whole airplane. And it looks beautiful. And it's essentially non-toxic, right? No respirator required when you're, you could do it in your garage if you, if you wanted to. And you it did, looks they, they say gorgeous. They say you in your living room and that's no people that have it. <laughs> Right, right, and it looks amazing. Thank you. That's a good question. More questions? Mm -hmm. More got? questions. Let's see. Um, someone asked if it comes with, if it will come with snow skis. Uh, Not this year. You can no. call up our friends at Trick Air if you want to set like last year. The this year, um, no additional skis or, or gloves or anything included. But no, a set of skis that would look really nice on it would be a set of the carbon concept. Oh yeah. Those carbon concept yeah. skis. They would, they would look really Those good. would look great. You're right. You're right. We we can hook the winner up with and the they, with the phone number. And those things close <laughs> very well. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. There's a set there, a set there. There's another set inside. Yeah. Yep. Those would be great. Um someone else asked if it's equipped with long range fuel tanks. Yes, it has twenty four gallon tanks in it. Which is about how much range? No, it gets you about six hours. Six hours. Uh, someone else asked what the estimate cruise speed uh, will be and useful load. I'm thinking the cruise speed is probably going to be in the mid 90s. Uh, useful load is well, they don't know what the gross weight is. Right, right. <laughs> what a perfect segue. Yes. Should we? So tell them a little bit about the challenge you were running on your socials about the gross weight. So we, yeah, we we put a thing out um, allowing people to guess the gross weight. Whoever gets the either on the money or close to it, yeah. if they're not on the money, then we'll give them um, a uh, raffle cup ticket. Right. You're going to sponsor a free ticket. So yeah. did you have a lot of entries? 
Uh, yeah, we had quite a few. Quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> and did anybody get close? One person got it right on the money. One person right on the money. Yep. Fantastic. So who who is our lucky winner and what was that number? Uh, Adam J is our lucky winner and that number was 1151. 1151. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. And our gross our gross is 2300 pounds. 2300 pounds. So do the math for me. <laughs> <laughs> our useful load is what? <laughs> uh, it's going to be it's going to be a little, little over 1100 pounds. 1100 pounds. There we go. 1100 pounds useful load. Fantastic. Wow, you can put a lot of gear in this airplane. Oh, yeah. Like I said, you can fit your own pickup truck. Yeah, right? yeah. Good questions. Yeah. Any more questions? Um, you want to pull some from Instagram? Yeah. 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 Average fuel burn, I don't know what this one is yet. It should be about eight gallons an hour. Mm. Would I, you put auto gas in this engine? Uh, probably probably not. Probably not. Yeah, with those heaters. Uh, 90, yeah. 91 yeah. octane, it would probably work. You could cut it. Yeah. Yeah, it was 50 50 mix. It would yeah. probably be okay. Yeah. Um, mm. That one has 9 to 1s in it as well, and I've run fuel. Villages and right. never had detonation problems. Okay. But, you okay. Know, if you went down to if you went down to Arizona or something like that, you you probably want to run a higher octane sure. to keep the detonation from happening. Um, now these engines, I've had people that get um, six and a half gallons an hour on them, and then I've had people that get nine to ten gallons an hour. On them. So mm -hmm. I'd say eight is probably just two. mixture management, or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you have all the instrumentation to manage mixture. Yeah. Right. Right. Excellent. Good questions. Somebody asked if you could turn it on. <laughs> Not right. <laughs> Not <yet. laughs> I'm sure you'll get a video when you fire up the engine for the first time. There'll be a video posted uh, probably Saturday. And we'll we'll be sure to share that. Yes. Yeah. You'll get to hear that from the gorgeous engine. Anything else? Um. Do you have any? This one? Um. What was? What's your favorite aspect of this aircraft? Besides the baggage door? Besides the baggage door, I mean. <laughs> That's my favorite. It's <laughs> hard to say. It's, it's really the whole thing. Um, I'm a really big fan of that prop. I can't wait to get one for myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's do a quick walk around while we answer. Yeah. So, so, this thing has a larger engine than the first one. It has larger tail feathers than the first one. The first one picks up the than the first one, and it's lighter than the first one. I might say that it's prettier than the first one. I'd say it's probably, <laughs> well, that, the first one's been drugged through the alders a time. Right, right. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, 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 it's got a patina. That's all. It's <laughs> in the woods a lot. Right, right, right. Good Any more questions before we let you all get on your phones to buy some tickets? Let's find one more. Uh, someone said, is it fit with a climb prop or cruise? Question mark. So it's a Kato ground adjustment. It's both. You can do both. So the idea here, from what everyone is saying, is you're getting better fuel, uh, fuel burn, you're getting higher cruise speed in the climb configuration, but at the same time, you can buy one prop, pitch it for climb, and then pitch it for cruise. So you got a cruise prop, you got a climb prop, you, you got an all-around uh, propeller. And Never. you could do that yourself without a lot of like, mechanical skill. Yes. Right, which makes it even yep. easier it is, to operate. It is very uh, fine style. <laughs> good, good, good. Great question. I actually have one last one from someone um, that I wanted to ask. And they asked if you could do a barrel roll in it. <laughs> could or should? I mean, could or should? <laughs> It's not going to fly upside down, though. It doesn't. The right. engine. It doesn't right. have the engine right. for that. And please, please don't do that to my friend. Either. Yeah. All right. This yeah. feels like my airplane for a very short time. I don't like to think think of it uh, barrel rolling through the sky. <laughs> <laughs>
but a fun question. Thank you for the question. Good? All yeah, right. I think so. Great questions. Awesome. So thank you for the participation. We'll definitely be in touch um, this afternoon or tomorrow with a, a few selected winners for participating, some free raffle tickets, and then we'll follow up with uh, Adam. Who won? Who, Adam J is our winner for guessing oh, the you're weight, ready. which was 11. Oh, you're sorry. All right, great. So I just want to remind everyone, these tickets are going to go fast, right? Now that, now that this beast is out in the world, people are going to be scrambling for those tickets, so make sure you get yours before they sell out. You can go to alaskaairmen.org slash raffle, or it'll be plastered all over the home screen. You can't miss it, alaskaairmen.org. Or you can give us a call between 9 and 5 Alaska time, 907-245-1251, and you can enter to win. And you are welcome to come by here. We have a, we have a computer at your by raffle ticket. That's true. Well. That's true. If you want to get up close and personal, if you're local, there's a kiosk in the Zantini Arrow hangar, and he does allow people to come and, and smell and touch if that's yeah. something that, that you want to do. So don't hesitate to do that. And thanks for joining us. Thanks so much, Junior, for building this incredible airplane. Thank you, Abby. And uh, good luck on the raffle, everybody. All right. Awesome.